The good news is, it's a long weekend here in the Great White North. Which means I'm going to do a bonus Mailbag Monday. I know I don't do Mailbag Mondays every week. I usually do them every second week. But, yeah, it's a long weekend, so what the heck. Unfortunately, this particular long weekend, I happen to be on call at work. Which means the beverage du jour is Kirkland Iced Tea. Cheers. Not quite as exciting as the usual beer, but can't win them all. So, item the first, metal development plate. That sounds intriguing. Again, I don't remember. It has a USB. Hmm, it's a USB powered metal development plate. USB cable and an Arduino Uno. Okay. Don't know why I specifically ordered an Uno, but it's not really a surprise what this is. I mean, you've seen these things all the time. The only thing I'm going to do on camera for this particular one is make sure that it, it wakes up. So plug it into my Wii power source here. Normally these things ship with the generic blink sketch in them. And this one doesn't seem to be blinking. Reset? No. Hmm. Maybe I will test it out. But first we'll go to the listing and see what I paid for it. Okay, I couldn't find the exact listing. Um, I got, I did get it at auction though for four dollars and fifty-one cents, which is probably why I bought it because that's a buck or so cheaper than normal. Uh, where is my thing here? It took, it took about five weeks to get here, which is not too bad. So I'll just quickly load the generic Blink sketch into here, and there we go. LED blinking on and off. That's not very exciting. Hang on. Hey, let's try a slightly more exciting sketch. Yeah, man. That also proves that it's that it's not completely dud. I mean, blink. Okay, blink. Blink proves that you can upload to it and that it works. But isn't this just more interesting than a simple blinking LED? Next in DIY earphone cable. Okay, that sounds familiar. Yes, there we go. Um, I think you saw a headphone repair video I did many months ago. Since then, the kids have been routinely bringing me their headphones. So, and I got tired of shortening and shortening and shortening the cables. So I decided to try this and just order a cheap generic replacement headphone cable. So this one has some little metal uh, cover on there, a nice neural and a bit of a strain relief. The wire, let's see if we can zoom in here, it's got a plastic coating that's got a sort of a spiral texture to it, including the wires going to the right and left headphone, and the thing that where it splits out, it's fairly solid, string relief on that side, actually, that's just one of those, isn't it? But this end is filled with, what is that? Feels like hard plastic or something. Hmm. So how long is this? Uh, 16, 32 inches. And another 16 after the Y. That's pretty decent, actually. It feels fairly substantial. It's flexible, but it's it's not bad. And these solderable ends are actually tinned and ready to go. That should save me a lot of pain in the ass factor the next time the kids bring me broken headphones. 3.5 millimeter jack DIY earphone headphone audio cable repair replacement cord wire 120 centimeters. I should have looked at this first. I wouldn't have had to measure it. Uh, available in gray, black, and white. Two dollars and eighty-five cents, which is what I paid from RCGA six eight two one. 
a name that just rolls right off the tongue, doesn't it? Uh, where is my note? That one took about six weeks to get here from China. The next one says LED TO 805W 20 times 1. Hmm. Again, LEDs is something completely reasonable for me to have ordered. Oh, okay, I remember these guys now. So, that's resistors. That, that goes with LEDs for current limiting. But these guys, ah, come on. There. These guys are surface mount LEDs. Let's just pull one out of here. Actually, let's zoom in on it. So that's a surface mount LED, which is pre-soldered to some uh, jacketed wire. Now then, how, what size is that LED? Yeah, that's that size, which is smaller than 0201. It's the next size down from 0201. Now, why would I want surface mount LEDs soldered onto wire for putting inside things? A surface mount LED like that can fit nicely up into the number boards, or if I wanted to draw out the class lights or the ditch lights, then I could put that easily in there without having to mess around. And I could do it with fiber optics too, but I think this is pretty neat and you can control them individually if you happen to have a, uh, a multifunction, uh, multifunction decoder. TO805W, 20 pieces pre-soldered micro lits wired leads bright white SMD LED 805. Well, there's a size. It's an 805. Okay. From EVE model underscore ES. Uh, I paid $2.93 at auction for the 20 of them. So that's, uh, what is that? 29 cents, half of 29 cents, 14, 15 cents each. That's more than worth it rather than having to go in and try and cross-eyed solder some tiny wire onto those tiny little grain of salt LEDs. Next in, it says USB adapter. Why would they lie about that? It really is a USB adapter. Okay. I hate it when they tape these bags together. So this is a USB A male to a female USB-C, I think it is. Where's the cable here? Yes, it is. Why does that exist and why did I buy it? Oh, maybe I bought that thinking that I would use it when I was testing my USB cables. Hmm. Don't know. Anyway, it's another USB adapter to put in the, in the kit. You never know when you're going to need a random weird USB adapter. This one took a while to find. It took five months to get here. And it was fallen off my listings, of course. Uh, but I found the same seller selling the same thing, though at a different price. This is USB 2.0 Type A Female to Micro USB B female adapter plug converter BB from Best Buy 365, who is who I actually bought it for. Currently, it's selling for $1.29 Canadian. When I bought it, it was selling for $0.99 cents Canadian. One times diode. Uh-oh. That didn't feel good. I felt like I cut through something. I hope not. Ooh, I cut through. That's not a diode. That is a Type K thermocouple. And so is that. Okay, I've already got one thermocouple, which is, but I think I ordered these with a slightly different... Yeah, the actual thermocouple element, which is... 
right there at the end is different. The one that I got was on a sort of a, uh, previously was on sort of a bolt-on end, which has a, when it had a big blob of metal on it and a screw thread, so that you could mount it into something. These are just raw and hanging out in the air, so hopefully they will react a lot faster. Matter of fact, let's just see how they, how quickly they react. So a thermocouple, uh, just for a refresher, um, is a temperature sensing device and it acts differently than most temperature sensing devices because most of them have, are varying resistance compared to the air which gives you the uh, temperature. These generate a small voltage off the little the two metals that are in there in, con in close contact. So as you can see as it's warming up it's coming up to to a, a few millivolts and if I give it, well no it might be a little bit violent let's use my heat gun though so if I throw the heat gun at it, check that so the heat gun is set for 361 uh, Celsius no, Fahrenheit I'm not sure oh no it is Celsius, I'm sorry so I'm not sure what the calibration factor for this is there is a specific number and a specific calibration factor for K type thermocouples and for other thermocouple types, but I don't know exactly what that is and it doesn't really matter. Um, but notice how fast this thing reacts. That's dropping off really fast. So I was hoping to use, I ordered these a long time ago and I ordered them hoping to use them in my uh, testing soldering irons video that I did a while back however took forever to get here so now I've just got some temperature sensors that I can use woohoo two pieces one meter wire k-tape thermocouple sensor probe test temperature from asterisk orchid star orchid something like that um, two of them cost two dollars and twenty four cents Canadian which is a hell of a deal for a very precise temperature sensor. When I was explaining the thermocouple, I got a little curious. So I decided to jump on over to uh, Wikipedia. And yeah, thermocouples are an electrical device consisting of two dissimilar electrical conductors forming an electrical junction. And the different types are the are different metals and, uh, and do different temperatures. Uh... They can measure a wide range of temperatures. The main limitation is accuracy, with errors of less than one degree Celsius becoming being difficult to achieve. Wow, one degree. Type K is the one that I got. It is a chromel and alumel, the most common general purpose one. So it will give you 41 microvolts per degree Celsius. It's inexpensive. And it's available in ranges minus 200 Celsius to plus 1350 Celsius, way exceeding the ranges that I'm likely to be using it. How about one more? Uh, this one has one of a part number and one digital voltmeter module. Well, that could be interesting. If that's what's really in there. Kits. Oh. Okay, that's this one looks interesting. I think I know what it is. Let's just pop it open and find out. So that circuit board looks interesting. It's got an inductor etched onto both sides of the board. I'm not sure if you can see it. Let's just zoom in. So the inductor comes in from there, coils around. It's those through holes to the other side and then zooms around there and comes back out into the circuit here. And it looks like it's actually two... Oh, I see. This one makes a loop around and then the second ta a tap, basically, 
joins in and carries on. Okay. Same thing on the other side? No. That's just a single-ended one. So it's actually a transformer. One winding has a gazillion, well, whatever, a bunch of windings. And the other one um, has only a single winding, but they're common. So it's, is it an auto transformer or a dry transformer? Something like that. Um, okay. And what else do we have on here? Buzzer, voltage, switch, LED, variable resistor couple transistors okay I am pretty sure that that is a cheap little metal detector kit I was right metal detector kit electronic kit DC 3 to 5 volt 60 millimeter non-contact sensor DIY kit from Alice 110 1983 two dollars and two pennies so how metal detectors generally work is that they oscillate um, and send out a signal through this coil, essentially acting like an antenna. And you balance them, so, or, and then there's a second coil that's receiving the signal. And you sort of balance and null it out. But then, when a chunk of metal gets into that magnetic field that's being generated by the oscillation running through that inductor, then it throws off the careful balance and it uh, detects. In this case, it looks like it's got an LED and a buzzer to detect with. This one's not really saying... Ah! It's saying what you can use it for. Awesome. Um, oh, and there's the schematic. Yeah, so there is the two inductors, or the two coils, uh, L1 and L2. Note that they have a common point on them. Um, they are at different parts in the circuit. So L1 presumably is the pickup coil, and L2 is the transmit coil, being as how L1 is on the base of the transistor. And I guess when you throw that balance out. Okay, so there's the potentiometer, the variable resistor that sort of sets the careful balance. When you throw that out, then it pulls this guy and makes lights and bells and whistles happen. That's a guess. This will be a future kit build, no doubt. And now then, the other kit. Let's see what we got here. It's a little bit less obvious what it is. It is an IC station part. That's a really thick board. Fiberglass board. I just I just learned what those de designations are. Um, I mean, fiberglass is very generic. Is that the FR6, I think? The more heavier one. This is... Uh, the, the other one is the lighter weight that's kind of like resin and paper. But this is actual fiberglass. It's a really nice looking board. Heavy, thick. Okay, anyways. Um, so what do you got here? ICSK059A. So if I can't find it, I'll look that up at IC Station. That's the kit. But we got two HC or 74HC595s on there, which I'm thinking is a shift register. And a handful of resistors. There's those uh, uh, 595s. And a pile of LEDs. Now I'm thinking back to what I bought. Hey, hang on. So those pins along the outside they have a very familiar form factor. Hang on here. It looks an awful lot like the Arduino pin layout, doesn't it? Maybe if I flip it over that way, or that way. Yeah, there it is. That really looks a lot like the Arduino pin layout, doesn't it? So it's probably an Arduino shield. And judging by all the LEDs, and one, two, three, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, columns and rows of pins around the outside. 
going to be easier for you to see if I zoomed in on it, wouldn't it? Uh, one, two, three. There's the resistors. There's four. One, two, three, four. 500 ohm resistors. Four columns, four rows. I'm going to guess that this is an Arduino controlled LED cube kit. It's not entirely a guess because I know I ordered one of those a long time ago. But let's go and see what the listing says and just verify it. Yep, that's what it is, all right. Electronic kits 4x4x4 blue 3D LED cube for Arduino Uno Shield LED DIY plus case, except for I didn't buy the case. Another one from LS1101983. We knew that because it was in the same package. Um, this is a little bit more expensive than my normal buy, but this was a special request. Uh, the last time I went out to do a kit build, I asked the, the kind folks on Patreon which kit they'd like to see, and a couple of them actually asked for an LED cube, which I didn't have at the time, but now I do. Um, what else do I want to say about this? Well, I could look down at the listing further, but look at the manufacturer. Uh, they sell it for five ninety nine as well, but they actually have schematics and whatnot. And building instructions and so forth. And a downloadable sketch to drive it all really useful another fun and successful mailbag monday the only thing that would have made it better is if i wasn't on call and that was beer but that aside this is going to be a lot of fun lighting projects for on locomotives random usb thing metal detector that could be interesting although i'm guessing that one's probably not the most stable in the world Another Uno, because you can always use another one of those. However, since I got this cube as a shield, I'll probably just use that for that anyways. Um, and it came with another cheesy USB cable, headphone cable for when the kids break their headphones again. And a couple of thermocouples, just to experiment with, I guess. You never know when you're getting a heat sensor. Cool stuff! Thanks for watching! Thanks for your comments. I, I always appreciate reading your comments. I know a couple of you are going to correct me when I said something stupid, and that's cool. I uh, That helps everybody. Um, if you've got any comments or questions, fire away. Thanks, as always, to my kind, kind donors who throw a buck in the tip jar over at Patreon. Um, they're helping me not go bankrupt doing these I'm going to do them anyway, but I really appreciate the help, guys. And I'll give them special perks and things like that. For instance, they can tell me which kit to build next. Could be one of these. Could be one that's uh, over there. Also, I do the occasional exclusive video. It's kind of behind the scenes. Usually it has more mistakes than what I put out in the real world for the rest of you guys. Once again, thanks for watching. Talk to you later.